What's up, everyone? And thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of the QB Factory Reboot brought to you by SB Nation and Bleeding Green Nation. We are recording on Tuesday, August 30th. Today is a very significant day in the NFL. All of the NFL teams have until 4 p.m. on August 30th as we're recording today to determine their 53-man rosters. And so a lot of stuff has already started happening. Players waived, players released. We're going to get into some of those Eagles moves so far already. But we're also going to, you know, touch a little bit on what we saw um, in the Eagles' final preseason game against the Miami Dolphins on Saturday. It was really, really bad. I'm sure you guys have seen the highlights by now. But the final score was 48-10. to uh, Jalen Hurst, the majority of the Eagles starters, did not play as expected, while – some of the Miami Dolphins starters, they did uh, start. And so we're going to touch on that game just briefly. But before we even get into any of that, I'm your host, Rachel Prevet. I am joined by my phenomenal co-host, the one and only QB expert, Mark Schofield. Woohoo! What's up, Mark? How's it going? How's it going, Rachel? It's going well. Things are going well. How about Good. you? Good. This is this is a tough day. This is a tough day. Um, yes. I, my, my movie quote is from Major League. It's okay. from a scene early in that movie where Tom Berenger, the, the veteran grizzled catcher, is walking into the locker room on cutdown day for the Cleveland Indians. And he stops, you know, Charlie Sheen and company basically says, don't celebrate in some front, in front of somebody that just died, you know, because they're going to go into the locker room and you open your locker. And if you get a little pink tag, it means manager wants to see you and it's never good news. And so this is a day that, you know, it, it happens every year, but it's a tough day because – something like 1700 roster spots in the NFL and like 3000 players fighting for those spots. Like the numbers are what they are. And that there are men today that are going to have dreams crushed. There are men today that's going to have to face the reality of a new career um, because it's the end of the line. So it's, it's a, it's a very sort of tough day, but you know, you kind of have to cover it. And we've got some Eagles quarterbacks that we're going to have to cover as part of this in, in the last couple of minutes, we were already to do one thing and, we got to go in a different direction. So it's like, it's kind of a bittersweet day, but we work through it and then we get, you know, the season to look forward to. We're literally, we were here. You yeah. Know, here today. Cause my quote is actually on the same note. I chose a movie quote uh, from Saving Mr. Banks, the Disney film. And it says, disappointments are to the soul what thunderstorms are to the air. And so I was like, let me look up, you know, thunderstorms. We all know what th thunderstorms right. are. Are we know that they're essential, you yeah. know, when it comes to nature Circle and people, life, all of that good stuff. Um, and it was like, you know, they remove pollution from the air and it makes you appreciate our sunny days even more. Yeah. So I was like, you know, just like that, just like thunderstorms to the air, disappointments, you know, they're uncomfortable, they're painful, all of that kind of stuff. But we as humans, like they're needed, they help us grow, they help us learn and become better versions of our, ourselves. And so, just like you already talked about, with these, you know, these decisions being made, players getting waived, players getting released. Yeah, it's painful in the moment, but I feel I feel like it's an important journey, part of the journey for a lot of these players, because like you just mentioned, like life-changing decisions for sure but it's gonna make them appreciate when they do end up signing with another team or if they decide to go and pursue another career like you already mentioned it just makes you appreciate it even more and so we kind of yeah, we, I mean, we are exactly on the same page yeah. Rachel. and it's important to remember like I, I love seeing those uh like it's a twitter meme that goes around every once in a while it's like you know 10 000, 10 million whatever how many kids play high school football and then how many kids play college football? Yep. And then how many kids get into a training camp? And then how many kids like make an NFL roster? And it's like 0.01% of the kids that like play high school football yeah. will get to this level. I mean, to even get to an NFL training camp, I have my buddy that lives across the street. I, you know, my son Owen and his son Joey are best buds. We coach sports together, Michael and I. His brother made it to, he played at Maryland, made it into a Ravens training camp. Mm -hmm. um but you know didn't stick you know he was an undrafted free agent and he's over there every once in a while on nfl sundays because they've got sunday ticket and outside tvs and it's a huge football family and we hand out and watch the games and he's this huge guy and yeah. it's like you know he was this close you know yeah. and but, but he has a great life you know extremely yeah. happy with what he's doing yeah. but for a lot of men right now it's like they're gonna get some bad news today and it could be the end of the line but it is like you said, like that quote, it's perfect. Like disappointment's part of life. Like you learn. And for a lot of these players that might get cut and released or waived today, 
they're going to realize, okay, this is what I need to do to fix this. So they'll get on a practice squad and get better and improve. And some guys that get cut or waived are going to play this year and play well. Some guys that get cut or waived, they're going to play next year and play well. And so we look forward to those stories, but yeah. it's, it's a bittersweet day. It is for sure. And I mean, just like a, a peek behind the curtain for the listeners, we always like we've developed and and have this system for our show where we, you know, you, we usually go through uh, the different plays or whatever from the previous game and we preview the next. But literally, we record at 1045 a.m. on Tuesdays at 1027 a.m. I saw on the BGN tracker, if you don't already like go and head over and keep up with all the yep. live updates there, because if I would not have went and checked right before we started recording, I would not have known. But the Eagles literally uh, just it was reported that they're waving Reese and net. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel, here's the question. Yeah. Do you think one play could be so bad that it makes the decision easy for a team? Heck yeah. Because the yeah, interception hello. he threw. The other night might be that play, right? Yeah. He had a lot of bad plays. Like every the entire, like if you just looked up, you know, Reed Sinet on Twitter, it was just straight negative negativity because he looked bad. I mean, finishing 12 of 22 for 104 yards, interception. I think, well, I think he might have, did he have one interception or multiples? One interception, but it was a pick six. And it was, it was one of the craziest, like, I, I don't, yeah. normally I can get on here and describe a play like I, we got a lovely tweet from Blake Abram uh, last week about how you and I would do a great job describing plays yes. and quarterback plays and stuff. And that was great to see from Blake. And he said, that, you know, we do a great job at like describing things. So you don't even have to look up the play. You can tell what's happening. Yeah. I can't describe this one, Rachel. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, you've got a swing route from the running back. It looks yeah. like a little spot curl. Is that guy blocking? I can't tell. Yeah. You know, it, it's Calcaterra, the, the tight end. Yeah. And, he just kind of like has vapor lock. And I think he decides I can't throw the swing route to the running back because safety's doing a good job coming over the top. Yeah, I'm about to get hit and sacked. So I got to do something with the football. I'll just throw it to the tight end who I think is still, I mean, he's turned around to kind of look for the ball. Yeah. He's like posted up like he's in the low post yeah. on the basketball court. It's just kind of a mess all around. It was and definitely a mess. The throw goes to the outside bottom of the numbers. The tight ends, you know, slide into the inside top of the numbers. And this defender has the easiest pick six he'll ever get. Like, so he's probably had harder interceptions in youth football yeah. than this one. Yeah. And again, I don't know if one play is the reason a guy got cut. I certainly hope not. Yeah. But if, you know, you're putting together a, a like, you know, point by point list of the mistakes this one goes near the top right like can you make sense of this play i can't i really can't and uh john clark from nbc sports philly when it happened he tweeted out uh reed Sinet just can't do this and i was like no for real like you cannot do that that's unacceptable i don't know what he was looking at but he literally threw it right to the defender so part of the part of my problem with Reed Sinet's performance during that final preseason game is just he looked inconsistent he just did not he wasn't he wasn't making smart decisions you know what I'm saying like the timing was off like accuracy everything that could go wrong went wrong with him so yeah. I don't think anybody is surprised by the fact that you know they waived him because why would you why would right. you which one's more surprising to you Reed Sinet or Carson Strong more surprising, I think. More, I think Reed Sinet because Carson Strong barely got any reps. Barely played, we saw right? Nothing from him from training camp. We saw nothing from him from preseason games. I think he threw like he four. had one pass two weeks ago, and then yeah. in this game where you know you're down twenty six nothing midway through the third quarter, thirty three three midway through the third quarter. Yeah. They didn't go to him until like almost the fourth. Yeah, like it was like. <laughs> Sirianni was like, I don't need to see this guy. Yeah, he threw four passes in the entire preseason. Yeah. So I think we all saw that. Like, we all knew. Um, yeah, it was cool to see, like, oh, what they guaranteed him, the franchise record or whatever, all the money for a UDFA. But his mobility problems, the knee problems, all that, the character flaws that we heard about, right. I wasn't surprised. When we saw how the training camp and the preseason panned out, I wasn't expecting to see Carson Strong 
you know, I know we talked that. about like maybe they'd try to have like a medical red shirt yeah. year for him. Yeah. The most popular phrase, and I saw a great tweet this morning that was like, if you're playing any drinking games, do not play the they'll try to get him back on the practice squad drink okay. anytime you see that game because okay. you will not live to see tomorrow. Because yeah. you know, with Sheffield with Rappaport, everybody that gets cut, it's they hope to get him back on the practice squad if he clears waivers. Yeah. They're probably gonna try to get one of these two guys back, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which one do you think? Do they try to get Sinet back or do they try to do that medical red shirt with Carson Strong, do you think? I don't know with this one because like like I already talked about Reese and that just looked really, really bad because Carson Strong is like so young. Is it like do you give him that opportunity, you know, on the practice squad? Or like is there like who I guess I don't know. Like, is there upside with Reed Sinet? We didn't see that in the preseason at all, but I guess like, it, it, you see yeah, it. it's so weird. Like, what do you want from your practice squad quarterback, right? Do you want somebody that's going to get your defense ready mm -hmm. that could like be effective in practice and help prepare your defense? How do you structure your practices? I would imagine that's what you would want a practice squad quarterback for to run scout team and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's what you're looking for from a practice squad quarterback, it's probably going to be Reed, right? Because you, Carson Strawn, health, knee, mobility. Like if you're getting ready to play, say, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys, yeah. who's going to give you a better impersonation of Dak that week during practice? So, I mean, that's that's one thing to sort of keep in mind. The other thing is if you're more concerned with potentially developing a quarterback into something more, mm -hmm. then maybe that would lean you in the direction of Carson Strawn because we kind of know what we got in Reed Sinet at this point. Yeah. You're still a little uncertain about what Carson Strawn is. He threw, like you said, four preseason passes. Maybe if the idea is to be an actual QB factory, right? That Carson draw. Like, it, it, does, is that what they could be doing? Maybe. I mean, we know how Harry Roseman does. You know, if we look back all these past years, we know that the Eagles always keep three quarterbacks on the roster, and for good reason. I, I understand why they do it because the backup QB position is, is important. It's essential. Sure. Almost. I mean, it's not as important as a starter, but you want a decent backup quarterback. And I did see um, something when I was um, reading an article, it was Jimmy Kimsky's recent uh, 53 man roster projection a few days ago. And he noted that 11 teams in the NFL needed to play their third string quarterback in 2021 with all the injuries, with all the COVID concern. And so that is an important spot. Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Eagles looked elsewhere and signed another quarterback in order to bring them on for that third spot. Yeah, I mean, there are a couple of guys that have just recently been released, right? You've got uh, Kellen Mond, okay. just released by the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Will Greer, Ben DiNucci, apparently, by the Cowboys. I mean, there will be okay. available quarterbacks out there. Yeah. You look down, you know, the rosters and some other different teams. San Francisco with Britt and Jimmy Garoppolo back. Yeah. You know, they've got Brock Purdy. They've got – I forget the other quarterback on their roster, but they've got four quarterbacks in their room. You look at Miami, who they just played. Yes. Skylar Thompson. I yeah. mean, I think Skylar Thompson has played himself into an actual, you know, 53-man roster role, but – um, maybe he's available. Oh, wait, by the way, that quarterback I was just blanking on in San Francisco, uh -huh. Nate Sudfeld. Nate, Su okay, okay. I mean, there's a familiar name, very I mean, <laughs> Um, you know, so there will be over the next 24 hours some quarterbacks that are available. There yeah. might be a quarterback that Howie and, and Nick Sirianni could look at and say, Yeah, we could braid Reed back or sign Carson, you know, they'll clear yeah. waivers and we can sign them. or we could put a waiver claim on one of these guys. Yeah. So I would I wouldn't be surprised to see how this pans out the next few days because yeah. you know how Howard Roseman is. And also Gardner Minshew, this is like the final year of his contract. Right. Um, well, yeah. So and Gardner played yeah. okay. He looked like night, the backup. Right? He looked like the backup. Like I had a couple plays that I, you know, noted for him. We saw like that Minshew Dion Kane connection again, which I'm loving. It was on yeah, absolutely. Day. He was six of nine for 48 yards. I thought he looked fine. Um, I really liked the play. It was um, 12 minutes and 14 seconds in the first quarter, second and 11. 
it was to Deion King for 15 yards. It looked like there was a little bit of a drop back. He lined up to the left, let it rip to the left. The field vision was there. It was pass interference. I think they uh like I think they just kind of like waved that flag though. Um yeah. but I thought, that, I thought that that was really good. He had another pass to Deion King as well, which was like first and 10. Uh, 1255 in the first quarter as well, hit him for 11 yards. So, I mean, I think he did what he had to do. Um, it was fine. Kane's a roster lock at this point, right? I hope so. He has been looking so good in the preseason. I'm going to try to pull up a couple people's um, 53-man roster projection. But and it's I interesting. It like, oh, we got – whoa. Whoa, what? Oh, God. I know this is the QB factory. Okay, okay, okay. Eagles are releasing starting safety Anthony Harris per Adam Schefter. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. What is that about? Didn't they just... Wait, 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 wait. I... D- what? Huh? There has to be a corresponding move here, right? Because they just... Didn't they just get... The guy uh, you just traded for... And Jaquiski Tart. He and, yeah. just got waived or released. Let me go look up the track. What? He's I'm like scrolling through the quotes. I What are they? What this is, is the gym, too. Like this is, this is an, uh, I got my notification. This is a notification from Schefter yes. Day. So it's I'm not getting got here. Like this is not an uncle, uncle Chap situation. Yeah. So I that's don't understand Nancy this. Harris, Jaquiski Tart, and that's a a, a position where it's definitely a concern so i'm like what are they what are they trying to do oh man the replies to this tweet Whew. why are we releasing our safeties but i'm not even surprised because there have been so many rumors about chuck clark from the baltimore ravens right and, like interest in him as well so i'm like all right what's going on howie what are you what are you working up you know behind the scenes like there's gotta there has to be a corresponding move here right it's coming yep it's gonna come wow i mean i've I've seen i've seen a lot of eagles fans saying oh we're getting jesse bates i don't know about that one i don't (laughs) know about that one i mean if you if you can sweat it fantastic (laughs) and cincinnati they drafted daxton hill out of michigan Uh she's played really well this preseason I, I'm sure how he's going to try because yeah. obviously there's some friction between Bates and the Bengals because he wants a big deal and they're not giving yeah. it to him. But wow. Cause I think BOG literally just wrote an article about Rodney McLeod. So this is really, really interesting. Um, very, yeah, no, up, next, up next on the safety factory, we're going to talk about, <laughs> Oh wait, Oh wait. Okay. More. There's more. What? What? What's going on? <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Uh, the Saints are trading Chauncey Gardner Johnson to the Eagles. Huh? Yeah. Where'd you see that? Ian Rappaport just tweeted that out. What? Oh, I can't God. keep up. Me either. This keeps Saints run, though. Yeah. I mean, Definitely. Chauncey Garner is interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm going to pull him up right now. I'm, gonna say, I'm not too familiar. Um, Let's see. I'm pulling up his season last year. He spent most of the time in the slot. Okay. Um, 25%. Let's see. Most of his time was spent in the slot. I'm trying to do math right now, which is not good on the, on the fly. 56 okay. snaps in the slot. And then something like 40, the other 44 on a, as a boundary corner. Okay. Um, he's, I think he started out as a safety, though. Okay. I mean, maybe that's the idea. You're going to bring him in and let him play some safety because you don't need a boundary corner, obviously. Mm-mm. I mean, even with Avante Maddox and Josh Joby, like you've got options for the slot corner position. Maybe they're going to grab Chauncey Garner Johnson and play him more at safety. Yeah, I know so what else are you going to do? I don't know. I'm, I'm, but let's see. Looking up his 2019 season. Yeah, I mean, 2019, he spent more time as a deep safety. I mean, not a ton. So that makes sense. Spent time at safety. 
you know, 150 snaps or so as either a split field safety or a single high safety. So okay. he's got experience there. Okay. Um, I guess that's the idea. Yeah, because all that leaves are Marcus Epps. Um, mm, yeah, this is looking a little scam. Yeah, I'm I'm pulling out some draft profiles on him. Let's see. Wallace, but okay. yeah, I mean he came out as a safety. Lance Zerline's, you know, draft profile on him. You know, some teams will see him as a big slot defender who can blitz, support the run, handle zone duties, or play man on big receivers. Others will see him as a single high, high safety. I okay. do what you got to do. I mean, yeah. Um, wow, I didn't. This we is interesting because I thought we were going to be talking about like breaking down quarterback stuff. Now we've turned this into the safety factory <laughs> on the fly, kids. I'm loving it. Breaking news, first time. I think that's the first time we've had like breaking news like while we were recording. Love it. Okay, Schefter won't stop. I need you to stop. There's more. They released LaRaven Clark, the offensive tackle. Okay. So, I mean, I I guess Schefter and Rappaport are just, like, on the phone with Howie right now. Yeah. Howie's got them on speaker. Like, okay, guys, this is what we're doing yep. um, all day today. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Rappaport with another tweet. Saints have crazy depth in the secondary. Gardner Johnson's in a contract year would not have been resigned. New Orleans moves on while the Eagles make a massive splash. I don't know if this is a massive splash, no. but I mean, Take it. he says Philly lands a starter. Looking at their roster, I think it's at safety, not corner. It has to be. I mean, maybe they put him in the slot, but haven't just – you know, moved on from Anthony Harris, have yeah. moved on from Tart. Like, yeah. you need a starter at safety. For sure. Unless I'm missing something. Am I missing something? You're not missing anything. That's why I'm, like, just trying to make sense of it. But that sounds good to me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ping Solak. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If, I'll see if he has any insight here. Yeah, we need all the insight. Wow. Okay. I'll let you know if 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 Kist or, or Solak have any insight here because I need all but, the details. Yeah. I mean, so all right. We get a better picture of what the quarterback room looks like. We now get a better picture of what the secondary looks like. Yeah. Um any other positions we should talk about since we're going around around the roster. Um, what about wide receiver? Yes, I was literally just gonna say that. What do you think? Jalen uh, Ritter, Devin Allen. Those are the two that I'm like over here kind of curious to see what's going to happen. I want to make the case for Allen on this roster. Okay. I was watching, interestingly enough, I typically don't, maybe this is somewhat football elitist of me, but when I'm reviewing games, I don't really spend a lot of time watching special team snaps. Okay. But I was watching punt coverage and I was watching Allen and look, I'm a fan of the New England Patriots, Matthew Slater, the, I want to write someday the piece that Matthew Slater should get into at least the Patriots Hall of Fame for what he does in punt coverage. Okay. Allen's speed as a gunner, his elusiveness as a gunner in punt coverage, I think could be something that could save the Eagles anywhere from 80 to 100 yards of field position over the course of a season. Now, I'm pulling those numbers out of the top of my head, but <laughs> watching him against Miami and really over the past couple of weeks, I think he could really contribute in that third phase of the game. I don't know if Rager can to that extent. Yeah, Certainly definitely. doesn't have the kind of like speed. Yeah. And then I woke up, I did a show last night. Um, you know, uh, we talked a lot about the Eagles with Matt, Matt Rogers um, mm -hmm. at Pluto Dope, honorable mention podcast. Wanted to give that a shout. He's a huge oh, fan of ours. Nice. Huge fan of, yeah. yeah he's, he's a really good guy. Huge okay. fan of yours. He's really um, cool. And we were sort of talking about, oh, there's really no market for Jalen Rager. I mean, wake up this morning and I'm reading stories that there is a market for Marcus so yeah. If you can get like a fourth round pick for Jalen Rager and yeah. free up potentially a roster spot to keep Allen, I'm yeah. on board with that. Are you? For sure. I mean, I'm excited looking at the wide receiver room. I'm definitely excited because it's it's loaded. Like we have this is like a good problem to have in a way. I don't want to see any more of Jalen Rager personally. Yeah. Like, I know we're not going to get back a lot from him. Um, and that's like the downside of it. But at the same time, like you just mentioned, fourth round pick, why not? I say let him go. Yeah. I'm, 
people optimistic about Devin Allen, like you already mentioned. I wouldn't be surprised if he made like the practice squad, honestly, because there are still like those concerns about the fact, you know, like catching ability. He hasn't really been playing. He hasn't played in so long. The speed right. is there and that's, that's great, but I haven't been hearing too much about him. Like people really confident that he's going to make it. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's everybody else. So, right. I mean, maybe he's just a, a better practice squad candidate. You and might be 100% right about that. But I think it, I'd like to have him around because if you get yeah. into, say, October, November, and you got some injuries, maybe by then you could say, all right, confidently, um, we could put together a package of like seven plays. Where you mm-hmm. have to do just X or Y, and just we could use them in that sort of because yeah. right now you talk to other people around the league that need wide receivers, and they're like, Oh, well, what about Will Fuller? Like, you get that speed, but you don't mm-hmm. know if he's going to be healthy. But the fact that speed is so dangerous, yes, you have an opportunity to keep that guy around, and then maybe for a game, and then around Thanksgiving when you need one big play and you've a little thin at receiver, is mm-hmm. your guy. I agree, I'm right there. So I can't wait to see how that's going to pan out. But I've been seeing those tweets as well about yeah. market heating up for Jalen Rager. So I'm like, oh, great. You know, he's been looking gr- good in the preseason game. So hopefully that's, you know, going to sell. Wow. More. Rappaport <laughs> must have Gardner Johnson's agent on the other line. Because oh he, Rappaport just tweeted, Eagles general manager Howie Roseman is always working the phones. And this is the best part. I mean, this is some good copy and paste right here. They okay. quietly mined the safety market and ended up with a star. Wow. Yeah. I Howie mean, Roseman, that guy, I'm telling you, this offseason, he has been. Mm. Oh well, I mean, I'm I'm flashing back to standing in front of Howie yeah. at the Combine in Indianapolis. Yeah. And both Howie and Sirianni telling us. Look, we've got an opportunity here. We have a lot of draft capital. We have a lot of cap space. We can be aggressive. The teams that have those two things are the teams that can really build out their roster one to 53. I mean, other need to be taking notes because he's doing things right. I mean, he is. You know, what's kind of interesting. A couple of hours from now, I'm going to record the Talk in the Star podcast. Okay. okay. Blogging the boys. Uh Connor Livesley. Okay. And Cowboys fans are livid at this moment. Why, why, why? Because they've done nothing. Literally, yeah. They let Amari Cooper go. Yep. They let Leo they let Collins, Collins, Collins go. go. Yeah. And now, look, Smith is down, hamstring detached from the bone. Yep. They have to take their rookie guard, who's b- basically been playing nothing but guard, and yeah. slot him in at left tackle without really any tackle reps this training camp yeah. for week one. And That's you know, why – yeah, And Cowboys fans are pulling that collective hair out because that team's done nothing. Now they have to turn around and look at Howie, who's wheeling. Shining star. Shining, shining star right now, you yeah. know? Has the balance of power in the NFC East completely shifted now? Heck yeah. That's why I'm like, anybody who's not counting, anybody who's not banking on the Eagles to finish first in the division, what are you smoking? Yeah. Like, I, like what, are you, what are you looking at? I don't understand. Yeah. I don't the get it. competition. We already talked about it. Is the Cowboys, and like you already mentioned, based off of their offseason, they're down in the dumps. Like, right, it's not looking too bright for them. What about the team near to us, Washington? We're not worried. Are you we're not worried about them? Right. Some, some news just came out about Chase Young, like missing like a few games. Yeah, they put him on pup. He's out for the first four weeks of the season. So, and then literally, I know we were on the um. Monday Football Monday show a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about like the, the competition in the running back room. And then Brian John, right? Robinson, that situation. I think of yeah. Brian Robinson, yeah. literally, that was like a few days yesterday or like a few days ago. So that's, yeah. I mean, here's all you probably need to know for those of you that aren't in the DC area. I was on 980, one of the two main sports shows this morning, Tuesday morning. Nice. I was not asked one Washington question. Okay. I was asked, Garoppolo, Lamar, New yeah. England. Okay. Not one question about the Washington Commanders. That probably tells you all you need to know about how this area feels about that team. This is the area, right? As you know, this is a this is a Commanders town, right? It is. It definitely is. They know what's up. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, I have not heard back from either Kist or Solak, so I don't have any news to pass along there. But okay. according to Rappaport, like there, you're going to use them as a safety. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I wow. guess it works. Yeah. 
I'm excited. And I feel like there's going to be so much more that's going to continue to come out. So I'm going to have to turn this around quickly because yeah. I feel like there's this, more. This, this show might be obsolete by like three o'clock this afternoon. Exactly. Exactly. When we trade for Tom Brady. Oh, heck no. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. By the way, did, did Tom get work done? Is that what we're all decided <laughs> on? You're the Tom Brady guy. Like, give us the inside. I don't know. What's going on? There... <laughs> I saw it a couple of years ago where like a plastic surgeon who was trying to make a name for himself okay. went like year by year from his rookie season to today. And he's like, okay, this year he had this done this year. He had this done. Like, nice. But everybody's saying like, he went away to get some Botox or something because those yeah. cheekbones were prominent. And I'm thinking he probably just ate strawberries for an entire week yeah. for the first time. and just didn't like it and got sick. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But it's amazing that Brady has become such like, this intriguing figure to talk about all the time. It's so weird. Yeah. The Eagles are not going to trade for Tom Brady. Though, we'll say. Not at all. No. That's why I was like, that. I love that. That was yeah. funny. I wasn't expecting you to say that. So I kind of, right. <laughs> that. that was great. <laughs> it's <laughs> always been all over the place. It has been, but I think that's more fun, you know? I, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, better than talking about every five step drop reads and had screwed up the other night. Yes. Cause I had, a, I literally had a play by, yeah. play by play. What went wrong? Yeah. Everything, apparently everything. It's football for you. Literally, yeah. the season is pretty much here. 12 days away is our first game for the Eagles. So, yeah, it's here. It's officially here. But make sure you guys keep up with all of the updates on the BBN uh, website. There's, like, the Eagles roster coach tracker. So, literally, keep up with that because there's going to be a be a day. It's going to be a crazy, crazy day. And as soon as the fit, the rosters are official, um, BLG and Jimmy will be recording that BGN radio episode. So make sure you tune in for that. It's going to be a good one. Don't forget to rate. Don't forget to leave a review. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media. All that good stuff. Uh, Mark, do you have any last words before we wrap up this episode? I'm going to catch my breath to say this. As always, go Eagles. Go Eagles. <laughs>